So what do you think? Should I invest in a red stocking cap? <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is Wednesday, December 14th, and you are watching On Top and Hot, where we have a passion of talking about hot OTC and penny stocks. I love the potential in penny stocks because they are everywhere. You can find them on the OTC market, the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange, because a penny stock is nothing more than any stock under five bucks. That's it. There's no other definition or qualification. And there are stocks under five bucks on every single market. So there are a ton of them out there. Now the best place to do your research obviously is the news. That's news I've looked at from the OTC market. That is six days worth. And would you believe I got all that news from this site right here, the otcmarkets.com website. No, I do not surf to find my news for the OTC. All of it comes in here in real time. All I got to do is refresh the page and it's in chronological order. It is a blessing, really easy peasy. You got your oldest news up at the top and your newest news down at the bottom. Folks, it's taken me a while to accumulate it, but it won't take you that long to go through it. And I guarantee you, it will be worth it. Now, when I'm doing my research on an OTC stock, this is where I come, the otcmarkets.com website. This is the only site I know of on the entire internet that is updated every single day for every single OTC stock. And who's updating it? <laughs> Fiener and the SEC, the people that matter. So quit running around the internet trying to find current information. That's what this site is all about, current information. Start here. If you don't find what you're looking for, the internet's out there, but most of the time you are. It'll save you a lot of time, folks. Now, the OTC market has not had itself such a great day as you can see up there, but I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope we get a bump here. Oh, no. No, this is a horrible day. Compared to yesterday, it's a big drop. Our dollar volume is down to 1.4 billion. I don't remember what it was yesterday, but that is a very low number. Speaking of low numbers, our share volume took a tumble. We were at 7 billion yesterday. We're trying to get to 10 billion and we're at 5.1 billion. It's a horrible number. The market does not run on this. It's like low oil pressure. And speaking of low oil pressure, look at our trades. I have been complaining every day about this being stuck between 250,000 and 300,000 trades. That isn't what I was looking for. 230,000 is a difference, but that's the wrong direction. This was a bad market. Yesterday was cold molasses. Today, coma. Yeah, it's not all that great. So it's a good thing I was doing my research today because I've got some interesting stocks to show you. Stocks that are jumping and bumping and catching attention. Let me show you what I got. So here we are again, talking about our old friend, ticker HNRC, Houston Natural Resources. We've been talking a lot about this company because there's a lot going on with it. There's a lot of money to be made here, dang near guaranteed. Now let me catch up with what's going on because I've got some updates that I've got to fill you in on. HNRC deals with natural resources and energy but they have a habit of spinning out companies, SPACs. And every time they spin out a company, they give free dividends in that company to their shareholders. Now they've already done one this year. They had plans to do a second, not quite sure what happened there. And they tell us they have six more that they're considering spinning out. Imagine free shares in all those companies. Well, they're doing a spin out right now. World Diversified Holdings, which is ticker WDHI. This is all their non-energy assets. They're just cleaning house and they put all of those into WDHI, which is $53 million worth of assets, leaving the company two other subsidiaries worth 38 million put together. So the lion's share is over at WDHI. Now they told us that the end of this dividend period is December 16th. They call this the record date. The record date is when they take a snapshot and account for all the shares and they see how many shares you own so that they can give you a dividend. However, there is the X date, which is even more important than the record date. That is the absolute last day. It's the cutoff when you can buy shares that qualify for the dividend. And it's, it's debatable. It could be one day, two days, or three days, like clearing a check at your bank. Right now, it is usually two days. So December 14th, today, was the last day that you could buy shares that qualify for the dividend. Now you're wondering, what more could I tell you then? It's all over. No, it's not over, folks. We're only halfway through this play. 
Let's be honest, how many of you out there are planning on selling your HNRC as soon as you can? Right. And how many of you are planning on selling your dividend as soon as you can? Right. Now, just so you know, WDHI is going to be doing the same thing this company does. They're going to be spinning out SPACs, giving free shares in new companies to their shareholders. So you may not want to sell. But if you're going to sell, here's what I got to tell you, folks. This information is so important, I have posted it everywhere, Facebook, Discord, and here at Twitter. This is something I just learned today, though it was brought to my attention yesterday. I didn't do anything until I dove into it today. What I have learned, that the date of selling your HNRC without losing your dividend may be the day after the payout under the due bill document rule. This is interesting, folks. The news presses, all the filings, they tell us that the last day to buy shares is today, December 14th. And the last day of the dividend run is December 16th, which they call the date of record, when they're gonna record all the shares they gotta pay dividends out for. Then we got a two week lull. December 30th, they're gonna pay us our dividend. Now, under most circumstances with most dividends, the day after the date of record, which in this case would be December 17th, you could sell your HNRC. You would get all your money back and probably some gains as well. And you still qualify and will receive your dividend in WDHI on December 30th. However, that may not be the case. They tell us here that the due bill document rule states if a dividend is more than 25% of the stock value, and ours is like a couple hundred over the stock value, to protect the parent stock price from a hard fall, you must hold your stock till one day after the payout. Payout's December 30th. That means you can't sell until after December 31st if it's a trading day. So. We haven't been told one way or the other, and I did try to get to the bottom of this. I called Fiener, but Fiener won't talk to a retail investor. I have to have some more uh, clout. So they sent me over to Fiener Investor Education. I couldn't get any answers there, this voicemail and ringing. So I called the company, just got their answering service. So I could not get any answers about this. I don't know for fact yet. Maybe I'll find out in a couple of days. But here's the point, folks. We can't presume that we have the right to sell this stock after the 16th and before December 30th. You may feel confident. You may want to roll the dice. You'll get your money back from HNRC and maybe some gains. But to presume you're going to get that dividend, that's a gamble. It's a gamble I'm not willing to take. I'm not going to sell until after December 31st. I'm not going to take the chance. Now, I found an article here that gives us a little bit of insight to how this works. You never know how a stock's price will respond to a special dividend. Now, here's where special dividends differ from regular dividends. Since special dividends can be very large, stock markets need to avoid having a share price collapse by that amount, which could trigger stop loss orders on margin calls. Think about it. Lots of people were going to sell their HNRC on the 17th. Well, they know they got a big dividend coming, so they'd actually be willing to sell at a loss. I know it sounds silly, but people would do that. You just want their money back. And that price could tumble hard, causing grief and pain for everybody else. So this is how they tried to control it. Thus, markets will adjust a company's dividend date with a due bill document. Basically, what this means is that the exact dates at which you need to buy and sell a dividend stock in order to capture that special dividend can be different than the ex-dividend date stated in a company's press release. In other words, just because they said one thing in the filing, just because they said one thing in the news press, doesn't mean that's actually the way it is. That's the company telling us. But FINRA, SEC, their rules are in charge. And I don't think they're going to make an exception. HNRC fits the criteria. They're not just 25% of the value. Like I said, they're multiple hundreds. So I think this company very well could be in the do build document zone. So if you want that dividend, dividend, I'm advising that you do not sell your HNRC till after December 31st, whether they tell us anything or not. That's my advice. Do your own due diligence, make your own decisions. But to be completely honest with you folks, it's not a dilemma for me. 
I wasn't planning on selling my HNRC anyways. The company spins out SPACs and gives free shares to their shareholders. They have a uh, annual dividend they want to give out. They have quarterly dividends they want to get out. They're doing solo spinouts like WDHI. And WDHI has stated that they are going to be doing spinouts as well. They both have assets. They're both making money. I don't see any reason to get out. Yeah, I may scoop off some profits off of WDHI, but I think I'm going to hang around in these companies because I like getting these free shares. Don't you? All right, let's go take a look at that chart and see what she looks like. Bet you're getting familiar with this chart, aren't you? This is ticker HNRC, and by all means, we're going to be doing our charting on TOS, that is Thinkorswim. This is a free trading platform you get from TD Ameritrade just for signing up with their free trading account. God, you can't beat that with a stick. All right, so this is a six-month, four-hour chart for HNRC. As you can see, I drew a line here across the highs of my prices and then a line across the lows of my prices and got this triangle. And she was trapped in there like a pinball. And we are looking for to make a decision. The tighter it gets down there, she's going to be forced to have to decide one way or the other. And she made her decision. She took off and she is surging, hit a high today of 84 cents. Look at all of our volume. It is growing exponentially. It's getting stronger and stronger every day. And our technicals are looking pretty good. Our PPO, Percentage Price Oscillator, and MACD are both pushing up over their signal lines and pink lines. Our RSI has had a pullback, but it's right at the overbought right now. Our 20-day, one-hour view. Now, it doesn't look the same, but that's that triangle. <laughs> That's the triangle. She was bouncing around in there, broke out, and then she just settled here for two days. That's actually reassuring. She didn't want to come back in. She was just getting her footing before she went into a high jump. Yesterday, she took off, and this morning, she bounded. She started off here at about uh, 62 cents and went to 84 cents, roughly 30% gain, real quick. She did fall back and she settled at about 70 cents and she is right now sitting on top of her nine day SMA. Our technicals, they're strong, but they're showing more signs of pullback right now. Let's look at our five day, five minute. So she has definitely picked up momentum. She was bouncing around here on top of that channel line. Yesterday she started climbing. Today she got some climbs. She did end higher than she opened, so we did get our 5% gains today. A lot of volatility. But you know, honestly, it's not about the price of the stock. We're after that $1.75 per share dividend, right? I mean, this could fall to a penny and you would lose, well, I don't know what you'd lose, but right now you'd lose 70 cents. 70 cents off of your $1.75. So you're still up $1.05. Now, I'm not saying we're hoping for that, and I don't think it's going to happen, but that's like a worst case scenario. So, yeah, if this goes up, it's bonus gains. And in my case, I'm hanging around for a while unless it crashes, but I don't think it's going to crash. I think things are going well with this. We're done now. We're done. People aren't going to be buying shares. If people start selling shares, you can think to yourself, they just threw away $1.75 on every share they sold for whatever price they sold it for. And that's the bottom line here, folks. We're not really worried about the price of HNRC. We're really not worried about if the dividend is coming. What we're worried about is if we're going to qualify for it. We've bought them now. Don't ruin it by selling your HNRC too early. I am highly advising that you hold your shares until December 31st or whatever the first trading day is after December 30th. That's just my point of view. Now here's a company that's got a lot going on for it. First off, it is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. Second, they had big news today. And to top it all off, they've got a super low float. Just in case you were wondering why we were looking at it. This is ticker VLON, Valen Pharmaceuticals Inc. She finished today at 51 and a half cents with almost 105% gains. Now, as you've probably already guessed, she is into pharmaceuticals. But just to give you a little more clarity, Valen is a clinical stage biopharmaceutical company headquartered in Philadelphia, PA. The company is focused on the development of new medications to help patients with CNS disorders. The company's lead investigational product candidate, Adair, is a novel abuse deterrent formulation of amphetamine immediate release being developed for the treatment of ADHD and narcolepsy. 
Sounds hardcore pharmaceutical to me. So what is the relative volume around this company? Well, today she jumped big time, whoa, from a quarter million shares to almost 100 million shares. That is 400 times her normal volume. That is a serious jump, folks. Share structure, well, I told you we got a low float over here. Even the outstanding shares is low. That's at 10.5 million. Our float in this company is 4.2 million. How sweet it is. Financials. All right, this is a bit curious. Most major exchange stocks, I expect to be making money. When I look at the annual and the quarterly, I don't see anything going on here, and that's concerning. Now, it is a pharmaceutical company, and unless they're selling something, they're more about R&D, research and development, and that costs money. So what I like to do, just so I can see if they're on a decent boat, is click this balance sheet here, and this will tell me their assets, their cash, their liabilities, and at a quick glance, I can see if at least they're in a good boat. So they tell us here their cash and cash equivalents are 4.7 million. We know that's millions and not thousands because they tell us to put three zeros behind all the numbers down here. And total assets right now is at 5.5 million. And their liabilities, what do they owe out? 2.1 million. So they are stronger in assets than liabilities and they have some good cash. So the company doesn't look as bad as it first appears. Disclosures. Well, we do have an 8K that is coming out at the same time as the news we're gonna look at, and the news just gives us a lot more information. So let's jump on over to the news. They don't have a whole heck of a lot of news over here, but they got enough. Now, this isn't actually news that was brought into the OTC market. This is news that was somewhere else online. This one here came out yesterday, but it's actually just an article from Seeking Alpha, and this is actually the news press, and why it didn't come in here, I don't know, but we got it. This came out yesterday, Valen Pharmaceuticals and GRI Bio enter into a merger agreement with the goal of advancing innovative pipeline of NKT cell regulators. Valen Pharmaceuticals and GRI Bio, a privately held biotechnology company advancing an innovative pipeline of natural killer T cell regulators for the treatment of inflammatory, fibrotic, and autoimmune diseases, today announced that they have entered into a merger agreement. The combined company will focus on advancing GRI's bio-innovative pipeline of NKT cell regulators. The transaction is expected to close the first quarter of 2023. Concurrently, with the execution of the merger agreement, the company Autum Capital has agreed to invest approximately $15 million at the close of the merger. And as they move on and hit milestones, they have committed an additional $10 million to future investments to the combined company. And they've got more information here, and it's a biotech, so there's lots of information to look at. But that's really what you got is two biotechs, two biotechs merging with one purpose to get these NKT cell regulators out there. Now, the real purpose here, and I'm not a scientist, so this is real basic. T cells are what attack us when viruses hit us, and that's what makes us feel bad. And what NK T cell regulators do is regulate those T cells so that we don't feel as sick or don't get sick at all. So it is a deep science that could help us a lot. And if they could get this on the market soon, they'll make a ton of money with it. I guarantee it. All right, let's go take a look at the charts for ticker VLON. She was running hot and then she cooled off. But what's she going to do now? Yeah, I kind of thought the chart was going to look like this. This is ticker VLON. That is a six month, four hour chart, and she is flat. And I expected that because most biotechs, pharmaceutical companies that don't have any products for sale, that aren't making revenues, they're more about research and development. There's nothing going on. There's no activity on the chart because everybody's waiting for the company to hit a home run. The company did have a high about five and a half months ago of $2.68 and maybe a week ago we hit a low of 20 and a half cents. Now I don't see any volume here except two days. Right here, which I'm presuming a piece of news came out, and then today we also had news. Actually yesterday. She has jumped far above her 200. She hasn't been above that in a very, very, very long time. Hit a high here of about 99 cents and has fallen back to 51 cents. All of our technicals show she is still falling. There is no strength in the technicals right now. 20 day, one hour. 
Well, she's been lazy, hasn't she? Look at that. Price under the 200 all this time. Hit a low and didn't do anything. Stayed under the 200. But two days ago, she decided to jump up onto that 200. And I don't see any news or catalyst, but she got up there. She sat up there until the news came out. And it looks like the news must have come out really late in the day. That's after market. She started to run. And she ran from about 25 cents up to 67 cents. You're looking at... Uh, 150% gains after the bell. And then she opened up the day and continued to run to 99 cents. Another 50% gain. But from yesterday's close, you got 100% there. And before the bell even rang, she was already falling. All of our technicals agree here that she is still on the downfall. Let's look at our five day, five minute. So there was your run right after the bell rang, she took off went sideways for a while, picked up that sideways activity, had a huge jump here in the morning and started to fall even before the bell. Came back down to her 200 where she started. Looked like she was gonna hang around up there, but didn't and she has fallen and looks like she's still falling even after market. And all of our technicals don't show any hope right now. Looks like she is still falling. So I really don't know what to think here. It is a new merger. You got two biotechs coming together and we don't have a clue what the financials are for the other company. That's gonna have to be brought to our attention. How long it'll be before they get something on the market? I really don't know, folks. But VLON has got technology that is hot if they can get it out there. And if they come out with any hot news, we may see another big bounce like you saw there. So VLON, they had a big run today, but I don't know if they're gonna continue running. I don't even know if it's worth putting on your watch list for tomorrow. But thought you might like to see the one that was kicking butt today. <laughs> Now here's a company I'm excited to talk to you about. They had a great day today. They literally hit the ball out of the park. They hit almost a thousand percent gains today and gave up almost half of it and still ended up with 591% gains. This is ticker ARAT, Eric's Holdings Corp. They had big news come out today, but it didn't come out in a news press. It came out in a simple 8K filing. So reading these 8Ks is a good habit. It can really pay off. So ARAT, they finished at a dollar with 592% gains on the pink tier and current. They've got a transfer agent verified, but we don't see a verified profile yet. And if you were getting into this for a long hold, you'd want to see both of those green ticks up here. But if you're just doing a short swing or a day trade, don't worry about it. Now, the company doesn't have any business right now. They're not making any money. Everybody knows that they're in okay position. They're just waiting for something to happen. And it's happened. Now, they tell us here that they are a pharmaceutical company. I don't think that's up to date, and I don't think that's where they're even heading to. So what was the relative volume today around that filing? Not very big, folks. I think she's under the radar, my God. 3.5 thousand shares to 207 thousand shares. And she got 591% gains. There has got to be a small float around this stock. Let's go take a look at the share structure. Ta-da! How do you like them cookies, folks? 2.3 million. Yes, I did verify it. 2.3 million shares in this float. All it took was less than a quarter million shares today to get it to run a thousand percent. And when it lost half of it, still at 500% gains. So this low float is a hot commodity. Financials on this company will be in a shell company. We shouldn't see anything but zeros across the board. Absolutely. Disclosures. Well, that's where the play comes in. It is this 8K that came out today. That is right here. Now, there's a lot of information in this, and it's good information. They wrote this out real nice. This is all we really need to know. This is a binding letter of intent and deal terms. This is an acquisition of Conrad Business currently in the process of changing its name to Core Business Holdings. And they are being bought by this company, Eric's Holdings. So what are they gonna be now? Well, it looks like they're gonna be some sort of FinTech company working with finances online. These are what they are gonna be focused on. Core Token and Smart Contracts, Ping Exchange and Settlement Platform, 
wall money neo banking and fintech software as a service platforms and core pay payment and remittance platform and if you want more information they break down each one of those down here little by little you can see what the company is going to do it looks like fintech is what they are involved in and this is probably going to make them money very quickly you don't have to manufacture a product you don't have to buy materials all you got to do is have a presence online and be set up and I'm sure this company probably is all about that I haven't done a deep dive I gotta leave something for you to do so there's your catalyst that's why she was running want to see the chart of course you do let's go look yeah pretty atypical for most OTC stocks for the last six months running downhill underneath or 200 this is sticker ARAT six month four hour chart yeah she's under a 200 by a mile hasn't got close to it at all this entire time not even today though today is the closest she has been she had a high bubble back here of three dollars and 74 cents and about two weeks ago we hit 10 cents and today we are at a dollar our technicals they are real strong right now but what is most interesting is look at this PPO our blue line was under the pink the entire six months not one time did it break this until now now it's broke it as our MACD is done I know it's tough to see but I can see it right there she has just broke as well and gone over the signal line and look at that RSI that jumped from 33 up to 86 woohoo what a jump let's take a look at our 20 day one hour view all right absolutely nothing going on here except that low bubble yesterday now if this stock had value when you see a low bubble it's a lot like a flashing for sale sign if a stock has value it's just a good time to buy it but this company was an empty shell company not making any money so there wasn't a lot of appeal so chances are it wasn't going to go anywhere but thank God the news came out today and boy did she fly folks look she closed yesterday at her low of 14 cents a high today of a dollar 39 that is almost a thousand percent run from 14 cents to a dollar 40 woohoo and then she gave away 39 cents and she settled over here at a dollar our technicals look at how smooth these lines are and they're all pointing up Houston we have a successful launch even our RSI is up here at 83 on the hour wonder what our five minute looks like all right she had a nice run here didn't she she started off at that low grew nice and steady all the way through the day till 2.30 when she hit her high and then she started to fall and maybe I should say thank you that the 20 day SMA just came into the picture she stopped right on that 20 day and she wrote it you can see she came up and she's sitting there right now now I have this thought that every time a new SMA appears on the chart as you can see here this just came on the price has a tendency to gravitate to that new SMA whether it be high or whether it be low it goes to it now it doesn't always stick on it it'll just touch it and bounce off in a lot of cases or it will stick to it so this doesn't surprise me at all but she is holding up there she has kept more than 50 percent of her gains however our technicals are not as hot on the five minute as everywhere else we've planned out on our PPO I wouldn't say she's falling uh, I really can't read the ADX that's a bit confusing for me MACD that doesn't look too good our blue line has fallen underneath and is pushing down but curiously enough our RSI is pushing up even with these red bars in that going down hmm very interesting I don't know if this is going to continue to run it is a new merger they're going to be fintech chances are they're going to make money pretty quickly once they get going but the fact is they've got a super duper low float just over two million shares and you saw what under a quarter million shares did today right there a thousand percent run and even when she gave back about 50 percent she was still up near 600 percent so for no other reason not that I expect her to move tomorrow but because of that float and she's already proven how she moves I would put ARAT into my watch list and whenever you see volume start coming into it remember this has a low float that you can cash in on maybe big time I gotta tell you folks it's difficult trying to figure out which stocks to share with you in such little time especially on days like today 
Now, I don't mean because it was a slow day. I mean because there was a lot of news today, a lot of deals being cut. Matter of fact, go back to the news that was scrolling at the beginning of the video. Go down to the bottom and see what I'm talking about. But what is most important is this HNRC. If you're in it for the dividend, folks, I am strongly suggesting that you do not sell until after December 30th. They've told us that this is a regular dividend. Everything looks like we should be able to sell after the 16th. However, the SEC has that due bill document rule, and I don't think they're going to give HNRC a pass on it. So I'm believing that's what's going to happen. If I'm wrong, well, you're not going to lose anything. You're still going to get your dividend. But if I'm right and you sell beforehand, we don't even want to go there. Remember folks, I get this information because I am scoping out everything wherever I'm at, seeing what people are talking about. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.